Open on YouTube. Hey everyone, thank you so much for tuning into our channel. I'm Ty. I'm Katie. Take travel. travel, and today we're headed to Switzerland. Let's go. Here we go. I don't right. believe we've done a Switzerland video. I don't think so either. No, so but this will oh my be gosh, first Switzerland! Time. From what I know, it's just so beautiful. I think of like the Swiss Alps. Oh yeah, um, just skiing. Yeah, you know, all I the think, snow. I think it's a pretty uh, recent video, actually. Oh yeah, we've really? been getting tons of requests. Yes, tons every single it. travel video that we post. The comments are flooded. Please do Switzerland. Yes. You have to know Switzerland. Right, so today, it's finally here. Yes, I'm excited for it. It Me looks too. like it came out uh, end of last year. So okay. I'm excited for this. Nice. All right, we're in for a treat. We Let's sure go. are. Oh, I'm excited. Here we go. All right. Thank you so much for watching. Yeah, thank you. And thank you for the comments and suggestions. Mm -hmm. Keep them coming. All right, Let's go. We have now reached Switzerland. Alps, cheese, neutrality, banks. Well, Switzerland didn't start Oh, yeah, off Swiss that cheese. Way. It was basically oh, yeah. a bunch of mountain folk that built an entire economy off of what are essentially European ninjas. And now if goes down, they have a bunch of bunkers right. they can hide in in case of nuclear war Whoa. happens. But Look we'll at get that. into that later. Whoa. In the meantime, here's the intro song. All right. It's time to learn geography now! Hey everybody, I'm your host Barbs. <laughs> Get your Geography Now merch at geographynow.com. It's not selling out if it's your brand. In any case, Switzerland, the crossroads of the Germanic and Latin worlds. Known as the Confederation Helvetica, despite not actually being a confederation. Named after the Helveti oh. tribe, which were actually Celtic. Hmm, we should hang out sometime. That were mostly wiped <laughs> out and driven away by the Latins and Germanic peoples. Oh. Well, okay. But anywho, <laughs> so I actually promised my Swiss friend Herman that he could be in this episode with me. And I wanted to fly oh, him tall. out here to Los yeah. Angeles to co-host. Unfortunately, at the time of filming this episode, the U.S. had restrictions on Europeans entering our country. And the actual date of acceptance for Europeans to enter would take way too long. So I decided if I can't fly him out here, why don't I just fly out there and make a makeshift Geography Now studio set and have him in the episode. Hey, wow. Here that's I go. sweet. Yeah. <laughs> That's awesome. Oh my gosh. I thought he was going to say like, oh, I got him on Zoom. Oh, Zoom made it. Yeah. And guys, say hi to Mr. Herman. Hello. Nice wow. to meet you. Uh, Switzerland. That is awesome. Again, I'm super short, so I got to step on a box. What does it mean to you, <laughs> Herman, to be Swiss? There's, of course, the whole cheese and chocolate thing. For me, to be honest, we are quite grateful that uh, we live in this nice country, which is just uh, safe stable and it has been like this for a long time by the way guys uh this is the guy that was in my heritage trip video uh this is my swiss go-to oh guy. cool you're an oh, expert nice. on switzerland right you sure, sure. Are. all right and with that let's move on let's find <laughs> sure the map, shall we <laughs> All right. All right. Getting that's, right into that's it. That's pretty sweet. He went so all the way there. Switzerland is kind of a unique place in Europe, mostly because of the way how it was formed. You see, most countries had a king, but Switzerland didn't. It was just a bunch of annoyed mountain folk who didn't want to align with any king and became independent. Now, there's a lot of disagreement <laughs> on exactly how Switzerland was formed. Some people say maybe it was the medieval times. Some people say it was the more modern Napoleonic Wars. So technically, the earliest form of Switzerland was after the Rütlischwur. Uri Schwitz and Unterwalden agreed to have an alliance. It was basically like, hey, Schwitz, how's it going? Hey, man, this army just came in and attacked me for no reason. Oh, they me too. Are we talking about the right? armies coming through without our permission? Yes. Oh, oh my God. So, so annoying. annoying. <gasps> you know what we should do? We should form a, um, a confederation. A confederation. A yeah. confederation. Let's do it. Like, let's form a confederation wow. together. Then later it was like, hey, can, can we join, please? Can I join too? Just like. I don't speak the language, but we'd like to join. This gives me an idea. Maybe I should expand. The point is, Switzerland. So what year was that? And today you have to say. Yeah, what year was that? You locked away safely in the Alps. Let's go to the map now, shall we? First of all, Switzerland is a landlocked nation located at the convergence point of Western, Central, and Southern Europe, surrounded by five countries. Remember, don't forget little Liechtenstein. The country is a federal <laughs> republic made up of 26 cantons, each with their own Whoa. unique flag that looks and cool. coat of arms. However, keep in mind, six of these cantons are considered traditional half cantons, which means they are grouped into three pairs that share a councillor in their government. In order to maintain 
maintain a somewhat decentralized government system that keeps cantons happy. Technically, Switzerland has no official capital, as stated by their constitution. Oh, really? Bern is considered the de facto capital, as it holds the House of Parliament and other federal authorities. The country's largest city, though, would be Zurich, located in the northeastern part of the country. It also hosts the largest and busiest airport, Zurich International. And from there, the next largest cities are Geneva and Basel, which also carry respectively the second and third busiest airports. Oh, that looks well. nice. Wow. In fact, about 75% of the population actually lives in the North Swiss Plateau, even though it only makes up about 30% of the land surface. Speaking of which, the only ambiguous dispute they have is with Germany and Austria over the Bodensee, or Lake Constance. The three oh, countries have never formally established borders, and they kind of just don't say anything. In any oh, case, wow. Switzerland also has some other unique border anomalies. For it's like one, three by countries. Yeah. Switzerland tried to grab as much land as they could north of the Rhine River, leaving a unique layout of territory grabs that jut into Germany, and it even leaves one exclave of Germany entirely within oh. Switzerland, boosting in Amalfrein. <gasps> wow. Head down south to the Ticino Canton, oh we have the Campione d'Italia, which is basically one big casino resort. It is an exclave oh. of Italy completely oh, that's sweet. engulfed within Switzerland, only about a half mile or less than one kilometer over a hill away from Italy. Finally, if you go up to Basel, you have some very weird skinny land salients that jut into France for no logical reason, like this one by the town of Riti, which oh, yeah, its weird. choke point is less than 230 oh, feet or really weird. wide. Transport in Switzerland is top-notch, though. Well-paved highways, tunnels, and train networks connect every region of Switzerland. The biggest and most proud engineering project that the country has ever gone through, though, would probably be the Gotthard Base Tunnel. It is the longest rail tunnel and deepest traffic tunnel in the world, effectively Whoa. cutting through the Alps, connecting the canton of Uri Whoa. with Ticino. This tunnel has heavily bolstered the efficiency of Switzerland's freight and passenger transport, as about 11,000 people and about 70,000 tons of cargo are able to swiftly pass by daily. Fun fact, because of Herman, Ooh. me and my mom actually got to go see Liechtenstein. He drove us all the way from Zurich, all the way through Liechtenstein in Austria, and we ended up in Lindau, Germany, where we met the worst waiter ever at a casino restaurant. I remember this guy was horrible. <laughs> in Switzerland, the public transport is really good. You can get almost anywhere by train. That's the Jungfrau Jochbahn, which brings you above 3,500 meters. But that's kind of like more of a touristy thing, right? Yeah, like, that's yeah. a tour. I've never been there. Speaking of trains, you said something about like they donate the old ones, right? Yeah, actually trams. The trams of Zurich are going to Ukraine, and the trams from Basel are going to um, Belgrade. The interesting thing is that historically, huh. some places wow. that are actually outside of modern day Switzerland used to be protectorates or associates of Switzerland. They are Mulhouse, which lies in today's France, Rottweil in Germany, Valtellina and Bormio, which today lie in Italy. Even though the Austrian state of Vorarlberg once voted to become part of Switzerland in World War One, we decided to better not take them in. You rejected them! Now, another thing about Switzerland you have to understand is that they kind of have like two imaginary lines based off of the cultural regions. You can explain. What are they, Herman? Well, there's the Röstigraben, separating the French-speaking part of Switzerland from the German. And then there's the Polentagraben, which is between the German part and the South, which speaks Italian. Basically, one side wow. is here, the other wine. Due to their history of constantly being invaded or outside forces threatening or just generally bothering them, the Swiss have developed a culture of, let's just kind of call it heavy defensive caution. We are neutral, but we still uh, are prepared to defend ourselves to make it as expensive as possible for anybody to attack us. This is why, should the event ever occur, the country is loaded with copious amounts of bunkers wow. everywhere. Like, it's actually a law. All living units have to have a bunker or something like yeah. that, right? Yeah. Wow. Oh my gosh. Um, bunkers, and if you go hiking, you will just see them, but they're nowhere on the map. There's no exact number wow. on how many are built, but apparently they can protect the entire population plus more, right? I think. The question is for how long, right? In any case, Switzerland has so many notable cool sites to see and visit. We actually filmed this part before I could audition anybody to do it, so uh, I'll just uh, fill this in with a voice dubbed voiceover. Here's Alex. Hey guys, I'm Alex. <laughs> I'm from Geneva, Switzerland, although I'm currently in Mexico. Here's a few things you should absolutely check out if you haven't made it to Switzerland. Check out the Gedo Fountain, the Cathedral Ooh. Saint Pierre, uh, Palais des Nations, which is home of the United Nations, and the Sun Hydroglyden Castles. Check out the Chateau Whoa. de Chillon. Oh, those are so Oberhofen, pretty. Uh, Valais and Tourbillon, uh, Chateau de Gruyère, uh, Bunhausen, which is basically a capital. Check out the Bear Park. Uh, bear Park? Brunnen what? Statue. Lauterbrunnen. It Wait. has over 70. That statue was like eating a kid. Lake Lucerne has the line Wait, did you see that? No, I missed it. <laughs> what is that? Which is basically a capital. 
check out the bear park. Uh, right King there! Oh! Him, statue. Lauterbrunnen <laughs> either has over 70 waterfalls. Uh, the Lake Lucerne has That's a lot of Wow, in the carved into the stone. Uh, yeah, 347 ski resorts covering a distance of 4,500 miles. 347? Sass Face, and my personal favorite, Verbier. For more Mediterranean feels, check out the Old Town Piazzas uh, and beautiful lakeside views oh, of wow. Scano, oh, yeah. south of Switzerland. Switzerland also has a bunch of museums and amusement parks, so for that, check out uh, Aqua Park, Cognitland, Swiss Vapor Park, and the Guy museum which oh, is fun. absolutely amazing and if you're looking for an adrenaline rush check out the mountain coasters or some oh yeah, as well as the Stuchbahn Funicular which is a studio uh, I don't think I'd ever do that yeah no but, way yeah thank you so much have a great day thank you Alex you're always going underground <laughs> wait did you see that whatever. sign it said silence after midnight I did see that yeah I wonder if that's like a a law, law? maybe hmm. maybe for a reason yeah if you have a mountain in between two places what are you gonna do which is actually the perfect transition into the next segment the now of course you cannot talk about switzerland without talking about the mountains and nature literally the moment you say switzerland obviously images of like snow-capped mountains and valleys yeah that's what i think yeah cowbells. and even the iconic matterhorn probably comes up although 12 people a year usually die on it but yeah it's oh. still very beautiful it's a challenge <laughs> So let's go to the map and break down Switzerland's land makeup. Now, despite Switzerland being famous for the Alps and being the most mountainous country in Europe, the actual Alps only make up about 60% of the country. The remainder of the country is made up of two other geographic zones, the Swiss or Central Plateau, which is the lowest part of the country and where most of the agriculture and livestock raising is concentrated, and the Jura Mountains in the Northwest on the border with France. Of course, in the Alps, you can find Schocker, the tallest peak, Dufourspitze, just on the border with Italy. No, the Dang. famous Incredibly difficult to climb Matterhorn just a few miles away is not the tallest peak. It just oh looks my really gosh. cool. That's all. Just to skip wow. away, you find the Aletsch Glacier, the largest glacier in the Alps, and it is a UNESCO heritage site. From the ice melt of the Alps, of course, you get the source of all the rivers that feed Switzerland, including the longest river, the Rhine, which shares borders with its neighbors. However, oh, I've heard the longest that. river yeah. fully in Switzerland, not shared, would be the Are or Aar River. Of course, these rivers also feed into the world renowned lakes of Switzerland, the largest one being Lake. Geneva or Lac Le Mans, in which Switzerland was like very set on making sure they hooked around the end with Geneva and got most of it when splitting it with France. Nonetheless, the largest lake fully in Switzerland is Neuchâtel, not to be confused with Neuchâtel in Normandy, France, which is where the soft cheese comes from. Yeah, and those mm. highlights don't even cover a fraction of all the cool nature stuff in, in Switzerland. <laughs> you can hike, then at the end you arrive at the lake, and it's perfect. Is it, like, fresh enough for you to drink from, or no? You could maybe, but guy might have peed in it five minutes ago. Right? <laughs> ah, oh. yeah, yeah. Well, Switzerland sure is beautiful, but when it comes to natural resources, we're actually not so rich. We don't really have any. Much of our economy is actually based on industry and services. To explain a little bit more about the economy and industrial output, here's Noah to explain. <laughs> All right, let's get to it. So we all know high-end things like luxury Swiss watches and Swiss knives are made in... Oh yeah, Swiss Army knives. Oh, yeah. By the way, a multi-billion dollar industry. By the way, if you're looking for a backpack, Swiss gear is amazing. I've had one of those backpacks for probably over a decade. Great stuff. Good backpacks, man. But the one industry that everyone takes focus on, even though it only makes up about 15% of their economy, is the Swiss banking system. Home to two world-renowned companies, UBS and Credit Suisse. Credit Suisse being founded mm. by Alfred Escher. Look him up. The appeal is that Swiss banks offer an insane amount of privacy and confidentiality. To explain more about the bank situation, here's Swiss geography Simon. Good to meet you. Interesting. Hello, yeah. I'm uh, Simon and I'm actually from Switzerland. What part of Switzerland? Bodensee. Whoa! See, back in 1713, uh, Switzerland's Great Council decided they would outlaw the uh, financial disclosure to uh, Europe's financial elites. In addition, all forms of bribery were pretty much criminalized. Since 1934, it was uh, made criminal to disclose the identity of any account holders, as long as they didn't have any extreme felony charges. Even though wow. the interest rates are really low, sometimes the rate is even negative, which means you have to pay to hold Swiss francs or to open an account. Nonetheless, our rate of investments are pretty high like at 2.5 percent due to the regular stability of the Swiss economy. Granted there was some controversy as there have been many lawsuits uh, brought against our 
beautiful banks, such as the 1996 Holocaust victim class action lawsuit, which claimed that Swiss banks knowingly concealed assets illegally acquired by the Nazis. Then again in 2009, uh, the US uh, strong-armed Switzerland into, you know, uh, disclosing uh, wealthy assets from 50,000 Americans. It worked, but now, you know, Swiss banks don't accept any Americans or even Swiss people who move to America or who make a vacation in Florida. If you'd like to open an account, just contact me on Instagram and it will be totally confidential. Uh, <laughs> thank you very much. Adieu, <laughs> Lieutenant. Au revoir. Thanks, Simon. Yeah, with great banks comes great liabilities. But of course, Switzerland is more than just banks. They have thriving pharmaceutical tech and tourism sectors. The palate is getting dry. Is that a Swiss bottle too? <laughs> That'd be pretty cool if it was. They take their agriculture <laughs> industry very seriously. The government actually subsidizes 70% of farms. I mean, how can you say no to the wonderful dairy provided by Swiss cows? To explain more about the animal situation, here is Gary Harlow. Hey guys, uh, Caleb's actually busy. He couldn't do this segment, but uh, we got Ian. So uh, you're going to be Gary Harlow today. You're probably going to mess it up, but I don't care. Yay. I'm going to screw <laughs> up for sure. Switzerland, <laughs> being the alpine nation it is, provides quite the habitat for all kinds of strange species. The country country has 18 official nature parks. Now in these mountains you have Whoa. quite a many of mountain adapted engines. Much noted are the Ibex and the Chamois. Thanks to their two toed hooves, these little guys latch on to the narrowest of walls. And this makes you think, Whoa. are they brave That's or are they real? just stupid? I ask what? myself that a lot. <laughs> Unfortunately, most of the predators like the gray wolf and the Eurasian lynx are incredibly rare. Brown bears were actually hunted till extinction in 1904. Now one species of predator Whoa. that does thrive in Switzerland is the European asp. It's a viper and it's well adapted to the high altitude. Now the bite's extremely painful. Now unlike most countries, that Switzerland so doesn't have a national see. Yeah. But if you ask around, you might find out that the unofficial Swiss animal is the iconic Swiss cow. Even though they're not naturally from these here mountains. All right, well, that's it for me, fellas. This is terrible. I'm sorry, Hannah, I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, Ian. Uh, anyway, we've discussed much of the industry, economy, and physical makeup. That means there's only one more part left. Food. Now, I love doing this part, but I will gracefully step down and let an actual Swiss geography take over. Hello, we are Mara and Terence. Oh, and cool. Today yeah, sweet. We are going to talk about Swiss food. We have to talk about cheese, of course. Thousands of varieties of them. You probably also know the popular dishes fondue and brown. Oh, fondue, food, yes. Like hash brown, Alpha Magrone, Zürich Schnatzlitz, Bernard Platte. Ooh, what is that? Mm. Wow. That looks good. And of course, uh, chocolate. Yeah, although we don't have cocoa trees here. <laughs> we also invented absinthe. Which is a super strong alcohol, can give you hallucinations. Then there is also <laughs> another soft drink uh, called Rivella. And uh, finally, in every Swiss kitchen, mochi and automat. And like a mini automat, Dursley, uh, in a Swiss person's hiking backpack. That's it. <laughs> And I gotta, I gotta try some of those desserts you made. Yeah, what All is right, that? Yeah. Barbs, back to you. Thank you, Noah. Also, fun fact, because Switzerland is so expensive, we actually like to go shopping in other countries just because it's cheaper. There are really? some laws what you can wow. bring back, like uh, one kilogram of meat, five liters of wine, or one liter of... So nice liter, that all the countries are so close in Europe. Yeah. You actually check at the border when you drive through. Yes. But I mean, you guys do have good stuff. I mean, you, you're well known for your cheese and chocolate. We put it on everything. You bake something in the oven, put some cheese on it. You're having sushi why not put some rocklet yeah food always brings people together except for that one time in lindau with that waiter i swear seriously dude four <laughs> years later and you're still traumatized yes i'm still pissed off anyway let's move on <laughs> Switzerland, as we already explained, has a lot of cantons. And there's actually kind of a word you guys have in Switzerland. Explain, Herman. It's Eidgenossenschaft. What does it mean? An oath alliance came along and formed a nation, except for Ticino, which we conquered. Despite the fact that each of the region kind of has their own canton cultural difference, at the end of the day, they are all Swiss. Here's how you break down the That's populace. That's pretty cool. Yeah. First of all, the country has about 8.5 million people and often ranks in the top three global competitive markets and human development index scores on earth. Ethnically speaking, things get a little complicated because Swiss censuses only take in data from factors like citizenship and place of birth. So the specific details can be a little vague, but in the broadest sense, it will say that about 75% of the country are Swiss nationals and the remaining 25% are resident foreigners, one of the highest proportions in the developed world. From here, things get a 
little overlappy. Because within both groups, everything breaks down linguistically as well. Often, Switzerland will refer to their linguistic groups for data rather than ethnic, in which case about 63% of the country yeah. are primarily German-speaking Swiss, 23% are primarily French-speaking, and somewhere around 8-9% to are primarily Italian-speaking. Wow. Finally, less than 1% are Romansh-speaking. Keep in mind, this data can apply to anyone from anywhere that claims these languages as primaries, regardless of their ethnic background. What we do know, though, is that of the 25% foreign residents, about 64% of them are from the EU or EFTA countries, the largest being Italians, followed by Germans and Portuguese and French. There's a sizable Kosovar Albanian community, and of the Asian community, Sri Lankans, mostly of Tamil descent, make up the largest demographic. The Swiss franc is our currency and we drive on the right side of the road. And you guys use the J plug outlet, which Whoa. I hate because there's like an inward diamond-shaped divot oh. and my C oh plug my adapters gosh. don't fit. Why do you, you guys are trying to do everything to be different from the rest of Europe. It's so weird. Well, sometimes you introduce a standard before the rest of Europe and then it's too late. In Switzerland, the dishwashers used to be 55 centimeters and then Europe introduced the new standard of 60 centimeters. But the problem is it costs more to manufacture in a special size. So our dishwashers cost three times as much. Yay. Oh. Anyway, Switzerland has four official languages, Swiss German, Swiss French, Swiss Italian, and Romansh. Even though less than 1% of the country speaks it, it's still an official language. It's actually pretty closely related to vulgar Latin, which was spoken in the Roman Empire, and uh, it's also a cousin of Romanian. So most mm. of us mm. know three languages somehow. What wow. is the difference between Swiss German and Hochdeutsch spoken in Germany? So Swiss German is a, a very strong dialect. We have uh, dropped, for example, the simple past tense, and uh, the Germans don't really understand us. Don't even get started with really? French Swiss wow. as well. Although I do wow. like how they use the nonante and uh, huitante and uh, septante. Cat vente and cat vente. Like, uh, and don't even get started with Ticino <laughs> Italian. In, in fact, you know what? Mat Matteo can explain it. Here you go. This guy can explain. So Ticino Swiss sounds very much like uh, Northern uh, Lombardy. You can't tell if it's a Swiss or not just by the pronunciation. But the Swiss have some specific word that give them up. For example, they say Natel instead of mobile phone or they say lift instead of ascensore for saying lift except for this it's just usual northern italian uh, speak anyway regardless of the linguistic mm. background they are not french swiss or german swiss or italian they're all just swiss for what's worth though there's so much backstory with switzerland for example the habsburg family which ruled the austrian hungarian empire for centuries was from habsburg in Argau, Switzerland. But they lost with their knights against the Swiss peasants in the Battle of Morgarten. See, this is kind of the Dang. interesting contrast to the otherwise neutral, peaceful image of Switzerland comes in. The brutal fighting skill of the oh, Swiss was terrible. so well-renowned throughout Europe that it actually wow. kind of became like their biggest export. All the rulers in Europe uh, got Swiss mercenaries, and in the end it might be a French king fighting an Italian army, and in the end it's Swiss fighting Swiss. That's so weird. And then they actually decided to stop having offensive war and introduce this neutrality. Nonetheless, you know, their neutrality has always been kind of pressured throughout the years and it's been kind of pushed. Uh, explain a little bit more, Herman. In neutrality, you also have to treat both sides of the war similar. For example, you could not trade with any of them, but we didn't do that because we didn't want to get invaded by Germany. So we traded with Germany, we traded some with the Allies. In the historic context of being surrounded by the Axis powers, well, you had to, to stay you... neutral. Yeah. You had to do what you had to do. How do you deal wow. with all this pressure trying to be neutral when the whole world is not neutral and you're surrounded by everybody? It's a tough question. Yeah. But for yeah. what's worth, Switzerland has known that neutrality has always kind of come at a cost. And this is one of the reasons why Switzerland is a conscription country. You go to military after you're 19, once for half a year, and then every year, a couple of weeks, three or four, until you're 30 or 31. Dang. There's a disclaimer. So everyone has to? Exceptions. The Swiss military yeah. has some quotas of how many people they want. If you have some health issues, you don't have to go to the military, but you will be paying 3% of your salary to the army. Mm -hmm. And if you have ethical wow. reasons not to go, you can also That's fill out I mean. a form, apply yeah. to not go to the military, but you will have to take one and a half times as much time in something called civil service, maybe, yeah. where you do some, some projects for the good of the country. So at the end of the day, somehow wow. you have to serve Switzerland. Yeah. And after the military service, you usually take the gun home. Technically, Switzerland has one of the highest gun ownership populations in the world. This all kind of plays into their unique system of government. It's often said that Switzerland is in an eternal election campaign. So we vote three to four times a year. And we also vote uh, regional for people to get into the national council. So it's kind of like Switzerland focuses more on policies rather than politicians. 
questions, would you say? A little bit of both? A little bit of both. But it's like you're very involved in everything. Yes, we are involved and if we don't like something, there will be a referendum. But in Switzerland, it's relatively easy. Yeah. Some cantons have different voting systems like uh, voting publicly by raising hand or... Wow, oh, really? Sort. The head of state of Switzerland actually though is the federal council. And one of them is the president, but it doesn't really matter because it changes every year and he's just one among equals. Fun fact, Switzerland can actually deny citizenship to anybody who wants to apply for it. In fact, in 2010, there was one lady who was denied because her neighbors said she was annoying. There's a lot of those stories, like somebody not knowing where the baker is in the village because she shops in a big store. No passport for you. In regards to religion, like most countries in Europe, most of the people will at least culturally identify with Christianity, and in Switzerland, the case is mostly with Catholicism or Protestantism. It used to be very important. My grandma told me uh, her parents would not have accepted her bringing home a Catholic, but nowadays, uh, we don't really care anymore. Now, of course, this is one source that played a role in many of the regional differences throughout Switzerland, and they also kind of have like a healthy level of regional competition. And with that, let's move on to the sports part with art. Ooh, sports. So, sports in Switzerland go hand in hand, even on the corporate side. In fact, because the tax laws, many European and international sports federations hold their headquarters in Switzerland. Domestically, though, oh, Switzerland I didn't know that. has some sports what is that, that wrestling? actually invented, <clears throat> yeah, looks like such it. as Schwengen, Swiss which is wrestling. played no. in sawdust, and the contenders oh, wear burlap shorts. There's also Hornison. It's a team sport. It's kind of like a mix between golf and baseball. In any Dang, case, looks we sweet. Yeah. with big snow snowy mountains you're gonna get an emphasis on this is i know a total shocker on winter sports skiing and mountaineering <laughs> yeah. are pretty much taught from adolescence switzerland also invented Ooh. competitive sledding they invented bob the sled. first bobsled and bobsled track in st 1870 has done pretty well considering my gosh i would have never guessed bobsledding was Alpine that old skiing yeah being their strongest event with 22 gold medals on another note auto racing was actually banned in switzerland they had a huge Really? Ooh. It stopped it all. But the deaths? made a little loophole exception for electric racing. Terrible. And finally, we cannot end this segment without mentioning the most popular athlete. I know him. Roger Federer. He's part of the big three. 20 Grand Slam singles title wow. winner. 103 ATP singles titles. Two-time Olympic medalist. He has streets named after him. Whoa. Points with his face. He's a model for Rolex and numerous brands. There's a lot of babies out there named after him for sure. I once got a trophy <laughs> for potato sack racing and it was a big deal. Like my mom was proud of me and I do not know how to end my segment. So, um, <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Art. Yeah, the Swiss people have shown that even though they're a small country, they still can pack a punch with a competitive side. And we have this thing called Kantonligeist, where each canton really has their own rules and does their own thing. To explain a little bit more about the culture and how things kind of go out in that way for Switzerland, here's Random Hannah with Culture Stuff. Hi guys, I'm back. And remember, you can get a Random Hannah shirt at geographynow.com. Random Hannah. The culture of Switzerland cannot be easily summarized as a nation. That's because it breaks down to each canton has yeah, that's a sweet flag. Yeah. There that. are lots of stereotypes for them, but here are some that you guys told us. Argau is known for having bad drivers. Valet has the most incomprehensible accent, while Graubünden has the most beautiful one. Glarus doesn't exist. Zurich has a superiority complex, and Geneva is just the French version of Zurich. Appenzell is known for hippies and alternative medicine. Funny enough, Inner Appenzell didn't give women the right to vote until 1991, and the country wow. has a vote until 1970. Oh my gosh. Fact, Switzerland is known for having many interesting laws. For example, if you live in an apartment, you are not allowed to make distracting noises after 10 p.m. You're not allowed no to toilet flushing after 10 p.m. or do noisy chores on Sunday. The Swiss really, really? value their silence. The Swiss are known for their many discoveries and inventions as well, such as cellophane and aluminum foil, Velcro, hmm. the vegetable peeler, the discovery of nucleic acid and DNA, and they were co-creators of the World Wide Web. Notable contemporary icons of Swiss culture include figures like Globi, Papa Mol, Shellen Orsley, and the most famous one worldwide, Heidi. They are notable for the visual arts in every field. You can find it in everything like Basel, with its 13th century Romanesque architecture, to the early 20th century Dada movement. Even Helvetica font and its variants originated oh. in Switzerland. It's one of the preferred fonts that yeah. we use on Geography Now. Speaking of the arts, one way to learn about Switzerland is through its film. And if you want to learn more about Switzerland's films, follow my channel, Filmography Now. Hannah has a spin it off. 
Halloween. In any case, <laughs> each canton in Switzerland has its own festivals and celebrations. You have everything from the Basler Fasnacht, where people in Basel dress up as and to Umspunenfest. Held every 12 years in the town of Interlaken, where men compete to throw massive Every bowls. 12 years? Wow. Festivals. We can't go through them all. Partially because we have to move on, which means you know what's coming next. Keith. The Florida man himself, Keith. Yeah. We need another hurricane. <laughs> 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 What's up, everybody? Keith here. So today I decided to wear my bathrobe because, you know, you got to live life comfortable. By the way, guys, you can buy a Keith shirt. Look at that design. I designed it myself. <laughs> okay, so you guys think you know Swiss music and all that stuff. You probably think of, you know, yodeling, cowbells. That's a good start, but let's go a little further. Many experts will agree that European alpine yodeling had its roots in Switzerland dating back to the early 1500s. The technique was used wow, by herdsmen trying to call their livestock. Or communicating far distances Look at that. Oh my gosh. in the mountains. Many will say did, that the did traditional you hear that? national what? That's yodeling comes from people trying to call, call their, their livestock. Yeah, I, I didn't know, know that. I would have never guessed that. <laughs> yodeling, <laughs> yeah. cow, is, come here. He uses a three-four time signature. Quarter note gets every single beat, whatever. This style was actually adopted by many classical composers like Beethoven, uh, Schubert. Uh, they kind of just, you know, took it and ran with it. Okay, now let's fast forward a couple hundred years. They actually hosted and won the very first Eurovision. Oh, wow. Fun fact, 30 years later, they would actually win again, but with Celine Dion, even oh. though she's wow. Canadian. And for some reason, Tina Turner is a citizen. That has nothing to do with banks and money. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, there are tons of music festivals like Street Parade Fest, Festivals, the Montreux Jazz Festival, which has had such artists as Pat Metheny, Steve Morse Band. I hope to go there at some point. Goal of mine. There's even a statue of Freddie Mercury. Oh, as cool. Queen recorded many of their top hits in a studio over That's there. That's awesome. Right, we don't oh. have time to talk about the entire evolution of the 20th century and the 21st century of Swiss musicians and stuff like that. But, however, what I will say is that if you like heavy metal bands, you should check out Celtic Frost, which is a great metal band. I hope you enjoyed my segment today. Stay cute. Keith, everybody. Thank you, Keith. So <laughs> something important about Switzerland is how they interact with the rest of the world. Which brings us to the last segment. Friend the zone. Friend zone. Oh. Yup. Then. I like this episode. Yeah, yeah this is great. To actually, touch a bullet and stay neutral throughout the last century, which was a quite difficult thing to achieve. I mean, they're so neutral that even North Korea joined the UN before them. Although you guys did host the European... Yeah, we'll host anything with you diplomacy. But hosted? But we'll also pay for it, but we don't join. Here's how they played out their diplomacy mm. game. In respect to their constitution and overall global reputation, Switzerland's foreign policy is to traditionally avoid alliances and work for humanitarian efforts that strive for world peace and prosperity. This wow. is partially why they host more international organizations than any other country in the world, most heavily concentrated in Geneva. Nonetheless, with their intense history and background, there are some countries that Switzerland has to admit they have quite a closer link to, if at the very least culturally. No one likes to make fun of Germans more than the Swiss, but in reality these two are so heavily tied in, especially with the Baden-Württemberg state that borders Switzerland. The area around the town of Rottweil was part of the old Swiss confederacy that was lost during Napoleonic Wars, and today the town has an agreement of friendship with Switzerland. Overall, South hmm. Swabian Germans and German-speaking Swiss generally understand and get each other way better than, say, a Berliner German. In that regard, Austria has traditionally been one of their biggest rivals in things like sports and outclassing mm. each other with things like classical music, architecture, and general welfare. They both admire each other's systems of operation, and many Swiss will say that Austrians probably get them way better than the Germans. Otherwise, France pretty much has the oldest diplomatic exchange when they signed the Treaty of Perpetual Peace in 1516, and the first Swiss ambassador abroad was hosted in Paris in 1798. Today, France hosts more Swiss people in diaspora than any other country in the world at nearly oh, wow. a quarter million. Oh. And they appreciate each other's, shall we say, bougie standards. On the other hand, Italians, mostly Lombards, have been rapidly moving into Switzerland, mostly in the Ticino canton, and are really taking advantage of that Italian-speaking official status. The Vatican City to this day still hires Swiss guards to stand at the palace, a tradition oh. that has been going on since 1506, yeah. one of the oldest military units wow. continuously in operation in the world. They still dress in traditional Renaissance uniforms and are actually trained in combat and small arms. 
It's not wow, just for those show. Uniforms it comes to their best friends today. Though, most wow. Swiss will tell you, oh, we're neutral. We can't say we have a best friend. But after you get them a little tipsy and ask them one more time, <laughs> they might make a Freudian slip and say, little Liechtenstein. Switzerland and <laughs> little Liechtenstein go hand in hand. They are irrefutably inseparable. Liechtenstein is basically Switzerland's adorable little baby sibling about 200 years younger. They not only share currencies and speak almost the exact same German dialect, they have a customs union, open borders, and the same stance on armed neutrality, but Switzerland also agrees to protect them if anything happens, represent them in any international treaty negotiations or abroad if they are unable to, and even when Switzerland makes mistakes and does things like accidentally firing an artillery shell at a ski resort in 1968 oh. or accidentally invades them because the soldiers couldn't read maps, Liechtenstein oh. is just happy to see them and offers them drinks upon arrival. All right, and in conclusion, Herman, take it away. You're the Swiss guy. I'm out. Switzerland is a beautiful country where it's really nice to live and enjoy a nice and peaceful life or have a nice vacation if you bring the necessary cash. <laughs> well, thank you guys so much. Thank you, Herman, for being in this video. It was so that. fun filming with you. I can't believe I flew out here to just see you. Stay tuned. <laughs> Syria is coming up next. Wow, that was an that amazing was a good episode. one. Yeah. I still can't believe... Uh... Oh my gosh, so many things. Yeah, there was a lot in this one. Yeah. This was a great episode. Yeah. I'm trying to find it. It was earlier in the episode. Um, I don't know what it was. It was like a goat or something. Oh, the horns on that goat. It was right before that. It was right before this. The horns. Um, this. That. This. Oh like, my gosh. On the side. Like right. that. Climbing Whoa. like it that. Yeah. Oh, look at that. I'm like, what? Yeah, I can't believe that. Look and look at the one is. in the back, how do too. They, how do they sit on that like that? I don't know. Just their two little hoofs. <laughs> it's like <laughs> straight what? up. Do they just climb up the mountain like that? Like sideways? <laughs> Interesting. I was like, oh my gosh. <laughs> oh my gosh. There was a lot to unpack in a this A lot, one. yeah. The food looked delicious. Oh my gosh, yeah. fondue. <clears throat> yeah, so definitely. Good. Um, what All else? the sports. All the sports, yeah. Oh my gosh, in the sawdust. Yeah, Ooh. in the sawdust. Yeah, wrestling. This was interesting. I think we I have different voting systems like this. Uh, voting publicly by raising hands. Oh yeah. Raising hands. So hand then like I mean there's so many people there. What? You just, just count, count all the them, hands? I guess. Yeah. That's interesting. <laughs> Keep your hands up. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah. The whole the whole episode was very interesting. Yeah, it was a really oh, good one. Switzerland looks beautiful. Yeah, it does. Yeah. Definitely. Nice. Nice. Awesome. Loved it. Well, now we can see why you suggested that. That was yes. a really great episode. Yeah, great video. Thank you so much for watching. Let us know in the comments down below if you enjoyed this, what we need to check out next, and and what's your favorite thing about Switzerland? Let us know. Let us know. And thank you so much for watching this video. And if it's your first time coming across our channel and checking out one of our videos, please give us a quick subscribe. Hit that notification bell to stay up to date because we come out with videos every, every single, single day. day. And we can't wait to see you tomorrow. See you tomorrow. See ya.